difficult to have people to have people around. And um, I did a webinar about two weeks ago, and we had I think a twenty twenty one or twenty two percent attendance rate. So pretty low. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sometimes. Fun. Sometimes. Yeah. It, it can go either way. Yeah, you can give it a start, Mirabella. I think we have uh, a few learners here and also a few might join along the way. And this session is recorded for uh, future reference to our learners. Uh, so um, the stage is all yours. 
No worries. Just make sure you cut the beginning uh, from the recording so that people don't think that it's uh, nothing happened, you know, just uh, <laughs> um, I see we've got an apologies. If I'm saying this wrong, we've got do on. Yes. Uh, hello. Uh, how do I pronounce this? Actually, my first name is Ahmed, and my last name is Duh, but in, in Arabic, it's completely complicated when translated to Greek. So I'm half Greek, half Egyptian, and so we can say do uh, whatever. I think it's do it, it's it's normal. But the problem here in Germany, do it means no, uh, you. So like I'm Mr. You, like Rush Hour, if you know the movie. Mr. You, <laughs> you is blind. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome, Mr. You. Um... In uh, so I think we've got we've got a small audience, so feel free to interrupt me at any point. Uh, I was planning to make this as interactive as possible anyway, uh, but given we don't have that many people, this may mean that I may finish a little bit earlier. So we will see. Um, again, I was planning to have a lot of a lot of demos, a lot of um, walking through the console rather than rather than slides. So also let's see how that goes as well. So let me get started. I'm going to start by. Uh, sorting my screens out because I have got two of them. Uh, just to let you know, I won't be able to see if you put if you put something in the chat. So please just feel free to unmute yourself and uh, let me know uh, let me know if there's anything that I can help you with by basically just shouting at me because otherwise I won't be able to see it. And with that said, let's uh, let's get going. So for uh, for today, I was just planning to give a pr uh, brief presentation on Elastic Beanstalk. Can everyone see my screen? Yep. You check. Okay, passed. Uh, just as a brief introduction, I was mentioning uh, at the beginning of the call as well. My name is Mirabella. I work for AWS over in the UK, so I am based officially in London and officially I live in Manchester in the north of the UK just because it's rainier and why wouldn't I? And I work with early stage and greenfield startups across the UK and Ireland. What this means is on a daily basis, uh, I get to talk to a lot of very exciting startup customers about basically how to get started with AWS, uh, how to migrate, how to start their migration, and just helping them navigate what's uh, what's available on, on AWS. One of these options is, uh, is happens to be Elastic Beanstalk, and I will talk more about the use cases in uh, in a few moments. Just a little bit about my my journey to here as well. So I don't have some nice slides about it. I have seen some people who have done some nicer slides. Basically, I've um, I've got a bit of an interesting one, as um, you do may well Ahmed may as well, uh, and some other of your colleagues may too, because basically I graduated from university. And then I went on and I worked in finance. And after after a few years and after a lot of evening coding classes, I decided that I want to actually try my hands at something new. And I also did a, a program. Mine was an evening program. It was similar to a boot camp. So I did most of software development. And at the end of it, I did interview with a travel company. And after the interview, I got offered uh, my first job in technology. Now, they asked me if I would like a choice of either software development or cloud. Now, I was mostly familiar with software development. However, I was always open to, to trying new things. So I said, I am going to try cloud. They hired me as a cloud engineer. I was uh, based in a team that was helping developers get started with the cloud, so very similar to what I'm actually doing now. And after after a few months, one of my friends suggested that I apply to AWS, which I thought was a crazy idea, but a few further months later, here I am after a long and very interesting interview process. Oh, I have to be, uh,
uh, sorry, I think uh, I think I had someone who unmuted. Uh, is there any questions? I'm happy that someone else joined us. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, don't worry. Anyway, I won't be testing you. Um, cool. So just to just to get going from there, I've been here for about 10, 10, 11 months, I think now. And basically, here I am every day having chatting to people about how to get started and which services to to use on AWS. Now, uh, the service for today. I believe we've got we've got more of an audience now. So is anyone familiar with the topic of Elastic Beanstalk? Nope. Well, this is why you're here today. So I'm glad that we don't have uh, some some experts that I will that I will bore because I'm planning to make this as accessible as possible. So if there's anything that you don't understand, then uh, as I said at the beginning as well, feel free to unmute yourself and just jump in and let me know um, if you have any questions or if there's anything that you do not understand. I'm not sure if you know, if uh, if you've not been reading English children's stories, but basically there was a story back in the day with uh, Jack and the Beanstalk. And uh, Jack had this beanstalk that, used, that could just grew and grew and grew and took him to the giant's castle in the cloud. And this is where the name Elastic Beanstalk came from. One of the most mysterious names in, on AWS. Basically, Beanstalk, as the Beanstalk that took Jack to the castle in the cloud, Elastic Beanstalk also is here to take your applications to the cloud, while at the same time letting AWS manage a lot of the a lot of the complexity for you. Uh, this slide basically has a summary of what it does. It's as simple as it says on here. You just upload your code and then you let AWS handle deployment, load balancing, and scaling. I will go into a bit more details about what specifically it does for any of these. But before that, let's go into a little bit more details about what we actually need to do. We have a web application. And um, I'm sure some of you may or may not have written some code, uh, had a website, prepared a web application, and now you just want to get started migrating it to migrating it to the cloud, and you just want to deploy it. Now, uh, deploying it is very easy, you would think. Deploying it is one thing, but then it it doesn't end with the deployment. You deploy it on the cloud, but then you also have to, um, as it says in here as well, you have to design for high availability. You have to do dynamic scaling, um, save version deployments, keep its runtime updated and your operating system patched and monitor its health. And now if you feel overwhelmed, that's completely normal because that's how you may be, that's how you may be feeling when you see all of this list. And now you probably already know because you've been studying AWS for uh, for a bit. I haven't asked you how far you are in the program, but you may already be familiar uh, with a few services that can help with that. And there's quite a few options on, on AWS that will help you with building what I've just mentioned, you know, dynamically scaling applications and really secure and load balanced. We've got options when it comes to compute, storage, network, databases, uh, management. Have you by any chance just to just to stop here for a bit? Is are you familiar with with the services on on this website on on this slide? Um, do any of them ring a bell? Yes, uh, actually, I passed the practitioner exam on them, <laughs> but I I mostly forgot some of them. <laughs> Even they, I study for them, but of course, not using them for some time, it uh, make it uh, easier to forget. But some some of them are obviously unforgettable, like EC2 Lambda and and also ECS and S3, all of that network and stuff. So.
Yeah, so first of all, congratulations on your exam. And you are right as well. If you're not using them, it's pretty easy to forget about them. But I am very glad that um, there is some familiarity. Basically, you don't need to have this familiarity. It's a plus that you do have it. But what I'm here to tell you today is that, well, is there just one service that you can use to host your web application? And the answer, I'm not making it as dramatic as I could probably make it, but yes. None of this, this list is great, but there is just one service that helps you very easily use all of these services, but in just one service that you will see very easily you just upload the code and then it it will help you with with deploying that for you and that is elastic beanstalk now what elastic beanstalk does is just one service so when i say just one service think along the lines of one service just like ec2 or lambda or um or ecs but this one service automatically handles deploying and scaling web applications or services now when i say web applications i know i kept i kept mentioning web applications web applications these are basically what you um what you write or what you develop with a number of programming languages so elastic beanstalk will support a number of programming languages such as um i believe that in the program you mainly deal with python but also javascript so node.js Ruby, Java, .NET, and it also supports Docker. And it also supports, well, Docker on, on servers that you may have experience with, such as Apache or Nginx. And as I mentioned before, the, the workflow is very simple. You just upload your code, and then Elastic Beanstalk automatically handles a long list so it will autom automatically handle the deployment as part of the deployment it will handle the capacity provisioning the load balancer the auto scaling and the application health monitoring but at the same time you will still have control over those aws resources and you can access them at any time so um the way i describe it to to my customers so to people using aws who want to get started with um with aws and i would say that it's a bit of an abstracted service so it takes away a lot of the complexity for you you don't have to think about the fact that you need to select a specific size of ec2 instance and then you need to create an auto scaling group and then you need to make sure that that auto scaling group has a load balancer and then you need to create the health checks on the load balancer. And then you need to log into that DC2 instance and um, install. Basically, if you're using Node, uh, you would have to, to install Node. You have to get the, the a version that's compatible with your application and a lot of those things. You don't have to think about that uh, anymore. It's all abstracted away from you. Now, uh, you do have access to the underlying resources. So basically, it uses EC2 under the hood and it uses the same uh, elastic load balancer. You have access to those resources and you can go into your AWS account and check them out once they've been deployed. Now, um, as I mentioned, that it does deploy some resources. There is no additional charge for uh, for Elastic Beanstalk, so you don't pay for Elastic Beanstalk itself. However, um, you will pay for the resources uh, that are deployed as part of Elastic Beanstalk. So, for example, if it deploys like some EC2 instances, then um, those will be associated with a charge. But, well, of course, there is the free tier as well and credits and all of that. But technically, you don't pay for Elastic Beanstalk. You pay for the resources deployed. Now, um, I've already mentioned that it does support the most popular runtimes for, um, for web applications. And um, it also has a little bit of a customization element to it. So if you want to, um, if you want to have something custom, then you can sort it out. However, you know, at the at the whole 
at the whole basis of it, as I mentioned previously, you won't have to spend, you know, the time or um, the time to to do it or the time to upskill to to be able to do it because it will operate the infrastructure on your behalf. And one of the good things that we always say in AWS, we've got this, we've got this saying, we say that it takes the undifferentiated heavy lifting away from you. You will hear this a lot of times. If you if you watch AWS videos, if you're learning AWS, you will you will hear this a lot of time. What that means is that basically um, you get to go and do your code, or if you work with other people, if you present this uh, solution, for example, myself as a solutions as a solutions architect, I am not using this service. I am helping other people use this service. So I'm helping them understand how to use this to make it easier for them to just focus on writing their code without having to learn a lot of other AWS services and spend time uh, like managing servers, managing databases, networks, and all of that. Now, um, on this slide as well, I did mention Docker images. I just wanted to mention that you can you can bring your own uh, Docker container if you've already done some if you've already done some work with it. I am not sure if you cover Docker and content containerization. I'm going to take this as a potential yes or as a potential no. However. I'm going to answer. Sorry, uh, we no at the course. We yeah, we didn't we didn't focus in the course on anything related to containers. We just took only the titles and nothing more. We didn't uh, dive at all. I think in the container stuff. So okay. I will stick to the I will stick to the web applications then uh, further on, just not to confuse you any not to confuse you any further. However, just to uh, just to mention that it does offer you the the opportunity to deal with that as well, and it may be helpful to it may be helpful just to just to have a uh, have a read of that or maybe uh, have another potentially like a session like this just to go into into containers because there's a, whew, a lot more to discuss to discuss around there as well. Uh, but I will just stick to to normal non-containerized web applications for uh, for this use case then. Now, uh, as I did mention, and you mentioned as well that you are familiar with, uh, you are familiar with EC2. Uh, so I just wanted to give an example of what would be, what would be managed when it comes to, when it comes to an EC2 instance and what exactly would be taken care of by, uh, by Elastic Beanstalk, because basically Elastic Beanstalk uses uh, one of the services that Elastic Beanstalk uses under the hood is EC2. So I just wanted to show you here uh, some some of the layers that will be taken care of by Elastic Beanstalk. So basically, it will be the EC2 um, the EC2 host, so the actual instance. Then you'd have um, the operating system, so you know when you uh, when you select a new EC2 instance, you also have to select um, an AMI, and that AMI may come with an operating system. So Elastic Beanstalk will manage that. It will also manage the application server and the language interpreter that is used to run your web apps. So you wouldn't have to install anything extra to have it support uh, Java, for example. And then it would also take care of the HTTP server and it will put your code in the right place so that everything works. So, for example, if you're doing a PHP application, you will know that your code will be in the right folder to be able to be uh, to be served properly. Um, now, again, I've already mentioned a lot of things because basically what I want to show you, um, and I hope that you will be able to see that in my demo, is that you don't have to worry about any of these. This may be some things that you may have learned as part of learning about EC2, but you you wouldn't have to, to worry about these in an Elastic Beanstalk scenario. Um, I do have a next slide 
by the way. Um, I do have a next slide with with some customer examples about elastic beanstalk, but I'm going to focus on uh, on something else actually. And this is how I have personally seen elastic beanstalk used. It's um, of course you can you, you can have these for for your reference because there are some uh, there are some customer names and you can see how they how they are using elastic beanstalk. I have seen it used uh, alongside my customers, so I work mostly with startups, and I have seen it used by startups when they were looking for something to get started with very easily, especially if they were um, they they were first starting with AWS after having experience either on premises or with another cloud provider. Um, they found it to they found it very easily to get started with Elastic Beanstalk because it works quite similar to, to other platforms. However, you don't have to worry about the complexity of, uh, of all the services in AWS. And I have also seen it with enterprise customers, uh, actually, um, again, because it works quite similar to, um, to having a platform or having, um, having um, operating servers, but then you don't have to worry about any of the complexity. So these are quite useful use cases when it comes to uh, when it comes to seeing how how it is used. And as I mentioned, we've got we've got the references, but I do like to to give it a bit of a of a more personal um, of a more personal touch to it, just from my just from my own experience, so that you see and you know where are the situations where you'd expect to encounter this service. Now, um, I have talked about Elastic Beanstalk a lot and what it does and how it helps you. And um, up to now, it felt more a little bit just like introducing, pitching the service to you. But from here on, I want to get into actually explaining what how the service actually works and how, how to actually use the service and hopefully get a little bit hands on as well. Um, is, are there any questions at this point? As I mentioned, I can't really see the chat. So if you'd like to unmute yourselves, if there's any questions and just stop me and let me know. No, no questions for now. Thank you. I like the way you're presenting. <laughs> Thank you. I'm trying to make it. <laughs> I'm trying to make it as interactive as possible, just so that you know that, you know, we're, we're all virtual, and it's very hard for me to just be talking to a screen. So <laughs> I would like it to sound um, as much as being next to you at the table. You know, so just imagine that uh, that I'm next to you, and you can stop me at any time uh, because I do appreciate that. Virtually, it's a little bit harder to um, to just feel to just feel close to to a person. I've just realized I haven't put my video on either. But well, I will I will put it on at the end for the for the Q&A session, just to um, just to get you put a face to the name as well. Because for now it will I have some demos and it will just make the screen uh, smaller. So back into the demo and back into the technicalities. But as I mentioned, please feel free to stop me at any point. Actually, what you're doing is, um, is a great thing. I mean, a lot of people, uh, they don't use the interactive way. And for me personally, who, I mean, a lot of people I know that, I mean, I'm one of them that I suffer from uh, ADD, which uh, ADHD part uh, subtype. I mean, uh, we, we, we lose focus so easily if there is no something that takes our attention. So something like that, it's very friendly for something that, uh, like uh, like ADHD people. I mean, so, so that's a, that's a good thing. I mean, thank you. I, I actually did not think about that, but thank you very much. That's that's some very that's some very interesting feedback. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I'm going to bear this in mind for for the future as well. 
cool. Um, as I mentioned, please do stop me. Anything that you don't understand, feel free to just unmute yourselves, uh, stop me and let me know. Uh, what I wanted to go into just briefly was the uh, was the Elastic Beanstalk workflow. So how does this service actually work? What do you have to do? So you will see here, we've got three main steps. So the first step, and I'm gonna use some Elastic Beanstalk terminology here. So the first step is you create the application environment. Uh, and the application uh, okay. uh, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, sorry, I, I, I didn't want to to get off my presentation to uh, to go into the mutes, but thank you very much. Um, as I did mention at the beginning, please do unmute yourselves if you uh, if you have any question and stop me, and we will take it from there. But back into back into the workflow. So, firstly, you would create an application environment. What that application environment is, is basically is a way for you to store the information about what kind of application you want to deploy and what configuration you want that to have. So, for example, the configuration of your load balancers, databases and more. So you configure and provision your environment uh, and then you would pass your application to Elastic Beanstalk and Elastic Beanstalk will handle deploying that to your service. Afterwards, you will see that in the third stage, monitor and manage, because what Elastic Beanstalk will do is it monitors your application environment, so the box that your application is in, and then it will take care of availability, scalability, security, remember all the advantages that I mentioned at the beginning. Now, uh, quick demo in practice so that you actually see what I'm talking about, and then we will go into further details about what you've actually seen in practice. So let me uh, hope that I'm still logged on. As I mentioned, let's try and deploy a sample application. Um, Elastic Beanstalk does actually have some sample applications. So if you would like to, um, if you have access to an AWS account or if you want to do it straight after the session, you don't need to have access to your own application. You can just deploy the sample one from Elastic Beanstalk. You will see very soon what I mean. Let's just go into Elastic Beanstalk into the console. This is my AWS account. And here I've already deployed some just to uh, just to make sure that it works. And what I will do, remember, is first I provision and configure. So usually if I don't have anything, you will have a button here uh, just to help you create a new application. You will have the starting screen. Let me see if I can get it. Yes, there we go. So if you don't have anything deployed already, you will get this starting screen and you will see a very easy to click button that basically just says create application. Let's click on that and let's see what happens. Uh, we will have to give an application name. So let's call this a demo Friday, just a random name. Um, we have the opportunity to give it tags. Now I won't give it tags now, but it's best practice to um, it's best practice to give applications and resources on AWS tags. It will I just help remember so something. So, sorry to interrupt, but it was funny that you mentioned Friday, and today is the thirteenth. So. Yes. Well, let's pray to the demo gods that this will actually work. So <laughs> I do have a video. In case it doesn't work, I do have a video. Uh, and then you have to you have the opportunity to, to give it tags as well. And then here is where the magic starts. You select a platform. Now you will see here, platform is basically a 
play like a way of deploying your application what kind of application do you have so in my situation i'm mostly familiar with node so i will go for a node.js application you can go for a python php ruby the world is your oyster i will go for a node.js application you will see it automatically goes to one of the latest versions of node and it also recommends me some uh platform versions here so see i've got some options it's automatically gone to this one i don't even have to think about which version of node i think uh, i want uh, and it's already sorted that for me this is why i mentioned that we're just going to get started with the sample application but you also get the opportunity to upload your code so this is basically when you create a code bundle like an application bundle that can be like a zip file and you can upload it either from your uh, from your computer like a local file or you can put that onto an S3 bucket and then just take it to the uh, take it to the S3 bucket. But we're just going to go with the sample application for now. Uh, we have the option to configure more options. We can either just go straight to create application or we can configure more options. What it means by configuring more options. And we will go in, into more details uh, about that as well. It's basically here you've got options to choose for example so elastic beanstalk you can either go for a single instance but it will make sure that you always have a single instance running or you can go for a high availability what high availability means is basically an auto scaling group behind a load balancer but it doesn't say that it takes all of that all of that aws language away from you it just basically tells you do you want a single instance or do you want an app you do you want your application to be highly available and you just select which one you want um you don't have to think about learning what an auto scaling group and what uh, what is and what it what it actually does you can if you wish but it's it's all um simplified for you and then you can configure some other things in here, such as, for example, the um, the instances, the security groups, uh, the capacity of the instance. So everything that you would normally be able to configure if you wanted to, but you don't necessarily need to unless uh, unless you want to. Um, the updates, so how you deploy your uh, your next applications, we see here because I have a single instance. I don't have a load balancer, but I can add one uh, and just how I want it to be monitored. So if I want enhanced monitoring here, I'm configuring my networking as well. And another thing that Elastic Beanstalk does, and that's really handy, um, you can add a database automatically. So all you would have to do, let's say that we want a database, is we go into the database settings and we give it a moment. And then for this one, because I've um, I've opted for this for the sample application, it will or it will automatically configure some things for me. But if I wanted to add my own custom database, then I can just go and select. Well, I want an Oracle database, and I want that uh, that engine. Um, with these with this username this password um and it basically this uses rds under the hood so you wouldn't have to go and create your own uh, rds database you can just add one from uh, from elastic beanstalk and it will automatically automatically be connected to your application so none of those um secure connection issues that you can have if you are just creating an ec2 instance and a database but let's get on to uh, creating the application from here. So as, as you've noticed, I haven't changed any of the configurations. I could have if I wanted to, but I decided not to change any because I want it to be as easy as possible for me. Now, this will take a while. <laughs> as I have seen previously when I tried it as, um, as a demo, this will take a while. Uh, so I just wanted to give you more details about what we've actually just seen whilst we are waiting for, for, for this, if that's okay. But I just want to pause and see if you've got any, any sort of questions at this point. Everything's clear to you. Yeah, not at the moment, no question for me. It's uh, clear so far, uh, quite informative as well. Oh, okay. 
Well, as I did mention, if you do have any questions, then unmute yourselves, jump in. Now, let's give this a few minutes as it says that it's going to need. Uh, I just want to make again a few a, a quick note. So you will see here that you've got uh, environments and applications. Basically, your application, the environment, as I mentioned previously, is the box that contains um, everything in your application. So the configurations, um, with your application itself, and everything that's provisioned. So it's what encompasses all of that. The application itself is a version of your application. So you will see um, if we are to upload a new version of our application, then we will have more than one applications. Actually, let me see if I can show it to you here. You see here, I've got more than one, uh, more than one application with like more, um, more versions and an application will belong to an, to an environment. We will see this later as well. So you you see now the uh, demo Friday is pending, but you see here that the other demo environment is working and and is okay. But I just wanted to try a little bit and make <laughs> try and make it clear and hopefully not confuse you further uh, as to the difference between the the environment and the application itself because this is something that can come up. Now I did say that I want to go into some further details about uh, what we've actually discussed. And let me see, because I've lost the flow of my slides. But what I wanted to mention just very briefly now, whilst the application is hopefully deploying, is that um, so the first application, the first application that we deployed is the first version and everything is fine. However, you know that in a, in a real life scenario, we may make some changes to that. And I wanted to, to also introduce the fact that in Elastic Beanstalk, you do have a few options for deploying your uh, for deploying your application. Now, this is usually when it comes to when it comes to a load balance service. So when you have remember that highly available option, not just a single instance. When you have just a single instance, you don't have that many options. But when you do have a highly available application, then you do have some options for. Um, for deployment to help you out with uh, deploying changes to your application without having downtime. So you do see here, there's, there's quite a few. Some of these do have downtime because basically all at once, as an example, what it does is it takes all of your servers out of, out of service and it puts the new version of the application onto it. Uh, whereas others, uh, others like rolling um, will get new batches and will go um will deploy the new version to the newer batches and then take the older batches out of service and this is basically a way if you uh if you happen to have come across ci cd and the concept of uh the concept of basically integrating your deployments having having that integration and not um having quick deployments and getting to get getting your application out faster this these are some things that elastic beanstalk does automatically that can um that can help you with that just so that you have um you have continuity in your in your application you know when you um if you've deployed an application and you want to change a word on the page uh, you don't have to create a complete new elastic beanstalk you can just upload a new version and you have some of these options when it comes to when it comes to actually deploying that And two other things that I can um, I could potentially show you if my application deploys in time is um, remember when I showed you on the page that enhanced health monitoring was selected by default. This is basically what uh, what enhanced health monitoring helps you with. Because you know, you all know when you're running a website. Uh, so, for example, you may just be having trial websites for now, but maybe one day you have uh, this idea to start to start a business, and that website would be your business, and you you want to make sure that that's available at any time, and that people can actually access it. 
And normally on a normal server, you would have to configure um, some logging and you'd have to configure some health checks and just um, adding a few configurations on there. But Elastic Beanstalk does that, uh, does that automatically for you. So just from the environment dashboard, uh, you've got this health dashboard and you can see the collection of metrics, uh, graphs, alerts, all, all set up for you, uh, for you automatically. And another thing that's set up for you automatically and that you don't have to worry about is basically the platform updates. So what I mean by this is that, um, for example, if um, if the operating system needs a patch um, or, or an update or um, just basically um, updating some of the runtime components, again, you don't have to worry about that yourselves uh, because this will automatically be enabled by default on Elastic Beanstalk. And Elastic Beanstalk will do it for you, but now, Sometimes that can, um, it depends on what you're doing, but sometimes that can um, affect your application. So what Elastic Beanstalk does is it has this option of having a weekly update window. So you will always know that um, basically these updates, these patches, everything that Elastic Beanstalk is doing is going to be done. For example, as you see here on Tuesday at 206 UTC. Now your application will stay available, but you always know that what that any any updates that will uh, that have to happen will happen at that time. And a uh, final thing that I wanted to mention, just because I wanna I wanna check the application now, I also want to make sure that we do have some time just for uh, open discussion, is I also wanted to mention that I've done all of this on the con in in the AWS console, and I've clicked around, but. I do appreciate that I'm talking to some people who have been doing a course that has taught them to uh, run commands uh, in the AWS CLI as well, and that you may have learned quite a bit about that. So if you're more of a command person rather than a console person, there's also uh, an Elastic Beanstalk CLI. So rather than going on the screen that I had, you know, with creating the creating an application and um, clicking around just to see what else you can configure, if you'd rather prefer using the terminal command line, you can check the uh, you can check the CLI and you see here some of the sample commands. So just for creating the app. You do eBay in it and creating some resources. You create and then you can you can deploy as well. But I've put there a link for uh, for all the commands available, so you can take a look and um, use that if you if you don't prefer using using the console. I am very much a console person, especially when I'm doing things for the first time because I can see all the options that I have. So, for example, in the configurations, I could see all the all the options that I had for configuration. I wouldn't have been able to see this in the CLI. But then again, each to their own. So, if you um, if you prefer using the CLI, then feel free and go ahead with that. And maybe once you get more uh, used to the service, then you can use some of the CLI commands because they're a lot faster than um, as me having to log in, finding out that it's timed out, and then uh, finding finding where to where to click on the page. Now, this is what I had about the service specifically from my side. So let's let me see if the application has deployed, and it has. So. This is where I mentioned that you will be able to see health checks. So in my environments, just going on to onto my environments, we have the Demo Friday application and this is your dashboard. So here you can see, for example, all the events that have happened. So you see that it's successfully launched. Um, and the health is now okay. And it's added this instance to my environment. Everything is fine. We see this big green tick. And we can go around and just take a look and see, see what's happening. We can refresh this. 
and most importantly most importantly what we can also do and let me open this in a new tab is hopefully fingers crossed all my fingers crossed we can access our application right now so as i mentioned this is the sample application i have not written this but i could have written uh, an application and just uh, zipped it up and then deployed that However, I've just used the sample one. So what that does is I've just had to upload, uh, well, I just had to select the sample application, but I could have uploaded a package. And then we can see here, it has automatically configured the domain. So the domain will always look something like um, whatever, whatever. Uh, you can configure it. Um, you can configure this first part of it, but it will always be like whatever dot dot elasticbeanstock.com. Um, and if you want to add a custom domain, you can do that as well, but then you will have to go and, um, and configure it. So by default, it will always, uh, it will always look like this, but it's very helpful because especially if you're just trying out something new, you can just give it and then you will take it and it will, uh, it will deploy it for you. And then you can very easily access it from your, um, from, uh, from your dashboard. And again, we see the application name. Um, we've got some actions here. If you want to take a look at the configuration, uh, change some things in the configuration that we saw before as well. And very importantly, here in the middle, where we've got this massive upload and deploy button, if you click this, it basically helps you um, upload a new version of your application. So remember, just having that um, having that package that we did at the beginning. So, well, the option to upload the package with our application. If we make a change, we can just come into our, we can just come into our environment and then just upload it from here. Now, this is the very basic version. You can, uh, you can change it and you can integrate it with other services to do this automatically for you. But in a nutshell, this is as, as, as simple as it gets. Upload the package, have it deployed, and then any other versions, upload and deploy. And this is where you would get the option to, to do it. For example, when I mentioned the all at once or, um, or the rolling and all of these. And I also mentioned the, the help bit. So we see that the help bit that we have now is all okay and it's all running. And we don't have any issues on that. So this, this was, uh, oh, and this this was uh, what I was looking for. And this is the dashboard that I mentioned for the for the health checks, where you can monitor, for example, the the network, the utilization, and everything that's been going on for the instance. This is what I had um, for today. So I would like to apologize. I didn't have a full 15 minutes, but I did. Uh, I did try and uh, and stop at regular times during uh, during the session as well, because I do want to give you uh, the option to ask me any questions, anything you may you may wish, be it about Elastic Beanstalk or if if you want to ask about something. I can't promise that I will know, uh, but um, here is your your option, your opportunity to to ask any any questions that may pop up. As I mentioned at the beginning, please unmute yourselves and just pop up on um, just pop on the microphone and just let me know if there is anything. Yeah, um, thank you very much. That was a very uh, interesting and impressive presentation. Um, I've learned a lot. Um, prior to now, I've not really gone this in depth into Elastic Bean stock. I just done like a you know theoretical um, understanding of it. So, but after now, I'll definitely be going into the console and just have more play with it. That was very good. Thank you very much. I just wanted to ask as well: Do we get like um? handouts for this like the presentation slides i um i think this is more a question for the uh for the restart theme i'm happy to share um if we can share um i'm happy to try and see what we can pass on all right okay thank you very much that's uh yeah, uh, Mirabella, this is Raj. Um, 
yeah i mean uh, if you are able to share the presentation then uh, if, yeah we we could share it to the learners on a learner uh, lms platform which they have access to so yes uh, that that would be great if you can uh, share the presentation slides with us please okay uh, do i have to check like with with marketing or anything internal i can pick up with you afterwards Raj. okay sure yeah I, I, I actually have one one question. I'm, I'm Tim. I'm actually I, I work for AWS Restart too. In the um, in uh, if you're using Beanstalk and you're deploying a uh, say an Apache web server on a Linux instance, and if you're doing it from the command line or from or the console, how would you insert uh, an SSL certificate into that deployment? I think that would be so. I am actually not sure, but just by a quick check, um, I'm actually not sure. Let me double check that for you, and actually, I can <laughs> I can get back to you as well because I thought that this would be a HTTPS by default, but I can't see it being so. So let me double check with you, and um, I'll get back to you on that. Oh, okay, that, that's fine. I was I was building a stack the, the other day, and I realized after I built it that it, that um, I didn't have an SSL certificate. Now I know yeah. how to get a certificate. I know how to get a certificate authority and actually install it. And uh, so the, the Apache uh, configuration file will read it and actually do that. But I, I I didn't see a convenient or way to do it in 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 Beanstalk. But that that's fine i can investigate too but if you have any if you have any insight on that you can let me know yeah i'll uh, uh, you know it should be somewhere it should be somewhere around here i'm pretty sure it does integrate with something like acm or something like that and um you can take it from there but just let me double look into it and then i'll let you know that's okay that's great, that's great. Awesome. thank you Uh, are there some labs uh, or um, um, hands-on or something like we can use to try Beanstalk? Uh... Yeah, absolutely. So um, as I mentioned, it's it's pretty straightforward as you go into the um, app, into the uh, service on the AWS page as well. But I'm very happy that I'm on the documentation page because if you go on the documentation page and this is basically what i was looking at as well so you just have to select your platform this is why i was looking into the into the php one so you just have to select your platform for example as i mentioned i'm mostly a node person <laughs> i do apologize but this is this is my area so um if if i say for example oh i'm working i'm working with node then you would just go into getting started and it would explain to you what you have to do so let's say i want to deploy um i want to deploy an express application um and this one uses git as well so it's a bit more um a bit more complex well a bit more complex i would say not necessarily but if if you are familiar with Node, you will uh, you will recognize what's uh, what's happening here, and basically you can just follow the tutorial in the, the tutorial in here. And this one uses the this one uses the CLI, but then again you can uh, you can utilize the the console as well. And I believe if you're also going to be getting started just on the documentation page into getting started then this uses yes this uses the console so this will tell you what what link to go to a platform to select and then give it a name and all the steps that basically i have been following and it will give you some screenshots here just to um just to show you what to expect and it will, will take you through to the environment dashboard and how to deploy a new version and uh where to where to go from there and i'm pretty sure i have seen a lab for ci cd with beanstalk as well so um i can i can pass that on to um to be added to to the platform afterwards yeah thank you so much thank you Any other questions? Yeah. 
No, no other questions for me, for me at this point. I just want to say thank you very much for taking the time to come out and do this for us. And I uh, really appreciate that. And the new knowledge farm today, thank you for all that as well. So have a good evening. And cheers, guys. Thank you so much for also my side. And I actually, I, I love your name, Mirabella. I think it's, it sounds very nice. <laughs> anyway, it does, uh, what does it mean, Mirabella? Uh, I think uh, in Latin it means wonderful, but it's it, it's like a long, far-fetched meaning from uh, from the actual name. You've been wonderful today. <laughs> thank you, thank you for joining, everyone. Cheers. Have a good evening. Thanks, Mirabella. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Thank you, right, team. Thank yeah, you, team. Thank you very much. Have a good yeah. evening. See, thank you. See, see you, you all next, next time. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. I have Bye -bye. a question, uh, Raj. Today, uh, did we have like session pre in one hour previously because uh, nobody came? Yes, uh, we we did have me, Tim, and uh, uh, Nick who joined the other call. Uh, it was uh, CloudWatch yes. monitoring resources. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, it so... was b b brief. Uh, I don't know because as I entered one hour before and nobody was inside. I don't know. Maybe I entered use a different ID or something. I don't know. Maybe because I didn't see anybody else. I, I was expecting few learners to join in, but uh, I could not see anybody else. Yeah, I actually planned to join as well, but you know, I didn't realize the time had come. So, okay, yeah, but, okay. Yeah, I was just wondering, will, it will be uploaded on the Canvas, yes. wouldn't it? All yes, right, okay, yes, so, it would yeah, be. Just, all right, I okay, had back to back so, calls, so the moment I finished this call, I would be uploading the other webinar session as well. I see. All right. Okay. Thank it. you. Thank you. Thank you.